short meeting, but the Royal Maine Global has got the hot scope for it at 8 o'clock. So then the ones that get down to the tri-state meeting have plenty of time. Now, what's going on now at the plant, you all know as good as I. And any member of the type I run into from time to time says, what good is the union? Why should I pay my dues? Why they could get a mighty good object lesson from where would they be now in this year battle for the seven and a half cents race that they wouldn't be getting if it wasn't for the union? What sure as hell is getting get? No! So leave us all a reminder that our union should be first and foremost in our minds, next only to our loved ones and the tiny tops and kitties. Now, before we break up, we're going to have a little entertainment, and I hope you all show a special courtesy tonight because a couple of the cutting room boys who put together an actress last Hotchkiss from the front office. <laughs> and if these good folk are good enough to come down and put this show on for us, why the least you can do is not to sneak out the back way like last time. <laughs> this little number they broke up is something that's right on the nose because it's about getting hot. And fellow <laughs> union members, that's exactly what we're doing. Getting hot. <laughs>
Listen, mate, pay attention to the music. Quit guzzling all these free beers. I ain't guzzling. I'm just being sociable. Well, this ain't a sociable. It's an official meeting. Mate, you gotta keep your strength up. We can't just sit around and do nothing. We gotta make plans. Half the ring gonna give in easy. Well, we got to slow down. I mean other things. Like why, for instance, this adjustment from Jake Fonda mine. He says when he was working at the Ironclad Overall Company and they was having trouble, why they spit tobacco juice in the back pocket to all the overalls. Well, I draw the line at chewing tobacco. I wasn't suggesting that. What if we get the packets with the size large bottoms with the size small tops? And like that, sure. Now that's what I mean. That's constructive. That's clear thinking. said she did it, we could have. But if someone up and admits they'd be busting up company property. Oh, listen, fellas. Here's the confidence just inside the committee. Some of the buttons ain't being sewed on too good. Just wait till the salesman comes through and back to Hassler. Hello. Well, Mr. Williams. Take many, eh? Hi, honey. Hi, Pop. Don't let me interrupt. Trick. Oh, that is another hot box. I'm deciding for 25 minutes. Oh, well, that's about it anyhow. That's all we can do is you waste Jackins up. Thanks for the beer. Oh, that's all right. Well, what do you mean you gotta go home? Well, my wife will be raising hell. Well, you should have thought about that before. Well, look, mate, let me take you home. Don't bother. Look, mate, there's prowlers out of this hour tonight. Single ones, I hope. Come on, Jess. Please, babe. Bye. Bye. I stopped in down the corner of just now, and guess who I ran into? Hmm. Old man Hasford agreed to Hayworth? No. Sid. Sid? What's he up to? Well, the way I got it is just been phoning you or something of that kind. What's happened to him? Never mind, Pop. That's what I told Sid. I told him, forget about it. Come on. Oh, Pop, you're too fresh. That boy don't feel good about something. Neither do I. Come on in, sir. Oh, please come in. Make yourself a good. Have you really been away? Sure. I went to Chicago to visit the Lincoln Park Zoo. Just because you were an iron on different sides doesn't mean you need to get a ball up. Looks like it doesn't. Not to me, it doesn't. What kind of queen are you anyway? Haven't you heard? I'm the sweetheart of local 343 Associated Garment Workers of North America. My gosh, Sid! I warned you, I told you, you know? You know all about how I felt. I happen to think there are certain things a person has to stand for in this life. But I guess you forgot all about it. I forgot nothing. They pay me to run the factory. So run the factory! You stick to your side and I'll stick to mine. Listen, Miss Williams. I love you. Corny, ain't it? Did you hear me? Yes. Babe, can't you see my side of it? I was a cutting foreman when I bluffed my way into this job, and I'm damn well fighting hard to stay here. And now I've got you in my plans, I'm fighting even harder. Watch those hands, Tyke. Well, here we are. Oh, what you got there, Pop? Your stamp album? Oh, yes, and Derek, but don't get excited. If Sid don't want to look at it, why, he don't have to. Oh, but Sid likes stamps. He even told me so. Don't be Sid. Yeah. I was just looking at looking at them the other night. Oh, sure, this universal appeal in stamps. I knew you'd be interested. Oh, Sid's very interested. But me, well, I'm just plain bushed. So if you don't mind if I slide off to bed. Run along, honey. Good night, dear. Good night. Sleep tight. Thanks. Now, Sid. 
suppose we start with the Pan American Mission. Guess that's as good as a place to start us as any. I live my 
father me with letters from Marx and Klein or anybody else, especially Marx and Klein. Pirates! But don't forget, I've got a meeting of the board of directors tomorrow. Yes, the books are already two threads. threads. That's what I got to tell them, two threads. We've got hundreds of orders to get out. How many we got to cancel? They're going to let us know. Give me your entry. I've been ready for the meeting tomorrow. That's all. Yes, sir. Mr. Haslitz, I'd like to make a pitch. Pitch? All right, pitch ahead. Before we get started, let me make my position very clear. I'm for the company first and always. But labor problems have got to end in one way. Compromise. Sorokin, you've been around here long enough to learn something. But you seem a little slow. I'm a fighter. Keep your dukes up. Well, Mr. Haslitz, you've Don't got to Waste your breath on me. Keep your dukes up. Dukes up? <laughs> what does that mean? Mr. Hassel wants me to take boxing lessons. You certainly are a character. And I'd like to get some information from you, too. What kind? Double entry. <laughs> We're not going to get any information from me, so there. Call me a Gladys. I'm a desperate man. And I'd hate to ask a cute kid like you to do me a favor, but... Sid, dear, you wouldn't have me violate a trust, would you? I sure would if it helped me unsnow things around here. Why is that so important? Because my future depends upon the Titanic struggle for pajama survival. Dear, <laughs> scream! And I just felt if I knew a little bit more about the bookkeeping of this all, oh, I'd be able to... No, not that. What an ask to give it to me. Just leave it lying around? No. It's locked anyhow. I know Sexy Dane would lend me the key. Well, you think so? I think it'd be fun trying to persuade her. Well, it might be fun being persuaded, only it'd be awfully sore when you wouldn't get it. Oh, no, Gladys, I'm grown up. Oh, you're kidding me. Well, I gotta go. Wait! What? Well, let's go out tonight. Well, I hope you're not serious about that key. I don't feel like being serious about anything. You're busy, huh? No. And I'd sure like to, except oh, where would you take me? Any place you say. I know a wonderful joint. <laughs>
ask you a personal question, sir? Do you like scotch? No, Gladys, I do not like scotch. Scotch is a very peculiar taste, don't you think? Kind of a scotch-like taste. Yeah, that's it. Tell me out. Is that gin? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You know, I can't think you out there. I mean, when you first came here, you caught on that I thought you were cute. But you never gave me a tumble till tonight. I told you what I was up to, Jim, my glass. I forget. Tell me again. I'm going to get you fried and get that key away from you. You'll never get my key. You'll never get my key. You think I'm terrible, don't you?
downstairs here to see you. Yeah, I sent for them. You been up all night? That's no joke, Charlie, I have. I'd like to speak to Mr. Hassel, please. And what's more, I think I got something. Take it easy, boy. Mr. Hassler, I'd like it if you could come down to my office, please, this morning. No, right away. It's pretty important. Come on in. Thanks. Morning. I called you down because I heard you having a union rally this morning. I wanted to talk to you first. That's okay, Sid. What I wanted to ask is can you keep your rally going so I can get there and talk to you? Well, what about? About solving this damn thing. There ought to be a time limit. Dan Ross. All right. You have a parade first. That'll give me time. That's fair enough. Oh, well, Miss Williams, could you wait behind, please? We'll wait you downstairs, babe. I know explanations oh, allow for this. Oh, Sid! Please, you've got to let me explain. I don't want an explanation. It's humiliating. But you can't possibly think of me. I don't think anything. I don't care. Sid, if it's anything to do with you and Gladys, it's none of my business. But it is your business. Oh, the hell with that. I'm talking about something bigger. 
Well, that's just great. Can we even talk and make sense anymore? I don't see how. Not until this is over. I've been eating mud long enough. I've had it. What do you suggest saying to me after the rally? I can't. I have a date. key back. Listen, I thought I heard something. Ah! Hi, you maniac. You heard something, all right. Well, I'm glad he got that up. How do we know he has? How do we know? Hold it. Calm down. It's going to be all right. Now, you've got to keep calm. And you... ah! you got to stop it! I'll fix that, baby. I hope this call turns out to be important. What's going on here? Now look, that's not nice. I don't like this. That's company property, Sorokin. Mr. Hassel, I better explain. I think somebody had better. Look out! What the hell? They're trying to murder me. I'll stop that. Call Senator Hickenlooper. Yes, sir. It's a plot to murder me. The bar gangster from Chicago. The old out the pole gang. Don't know what art with me. Did you see those guys? That's the work of art. It's Chicago gangsters. It's their marching. What's that? You went in rallies. They were going to have a parade. A parade? <laughs> Hi, he's on the job, man. The place is full of gangsters. They're not after you, Mr. Hassler. They're after me. Oh, what? What are you talking about? Get me the police. You don't want to arrest Hines, do you? Hines? You've tried to Hines? Suppose you succeeded. And me right in the middle of labor troubles and all. Suppose you hit him. I could have hit him if I wanted to. I was just trying to scare him. Is this why you brought me here? To risk my life? No. I don't want to be involved in these personal matters. I told you because there's going to be a strike this morning unless you listen to me. I told you I'm a fighter. So am I. What? Let us have a second. All right, Bruno, you keep your hands off me. I'm a fighter, I am. Come on, Joyker! Mr. Hassler, I'm going before the board of directors. What did you say? If I can't solve this dispute any other way, I'm going to have to go. So what? Sometimes. I've I been up all that... night with your ledger. What are you talking about? I apologize. I know you didn't hire me as a safe cracker, but I had to get some facts. I've been through your books. You mean to say that, that seven you... and a half cents was added to the cost six months ago? Uh, I can put you in jail, sir. And that's what I'm going to No, you can't. But you can give that raise. And if you don't, I'll go before the board of directors and tell them how many orders have been canceled. Now, what there, more? Read your mail. Mabel tried to tell you all day yesterday about Marks and Klein, but he wouldn't listen. And this operation falls, I hold with it, and I don't want to. So do me a favor, sit down and talk to me. Oh. 
that's 260 weeks times 40 hours every week, and roughly two and a quarter hours overtime, at time and a half for overtime, comes to exactly $852.74. That's enough for me to get an automatic working machine, a year supply of real green coffee for the living room.
one of the town's most exclusive clubs, where a party is being given jointly by Mr. Hassler and the union. We were told to dress for the occasion. Life is lots of fun. Two can sleep as cheap as one. <laughs> 